Evening. Evening, uh, Joe. A few nights before Christmas, and we're still working, which is good. Um, let's start with item number one, the webcasting introduction. Uh, this meeting is to be webcast. Members are reminded to the need to um, unmute before speaking. Um, I would like to remind everyone present that the meeting will be broadcast live to the internet for, or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. Please also be aware that if you if there are technical difficulties um, that interrupt the meeting that cannot be overcome, I'll, I may need to adjourn the meeting um, in its process. Apologies for absence. None received, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Any declarations of interest? None received. None. Remember, members, I am using the blue hands on the participants uh, this evening. Um, minutes for the last meeting, can I take those as agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Reports of portfolio holders, if there are any. No. no. Oh, Councillor Bedford. Oh, Councillor Bedford. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, I just want to draw it to everybody's attention, Leader, that uh, obviously after signing off on the air quality mitigation strategy, because Natural England withdrew their objection, I uh, uh, signed off the document and then due to call-in period, uh, other members of the council have called in the uh, document. So we'll be going forward. A uh, meeting has been arranged for Thursday morning. I'm quite disappointed that out of all the people that signed the document, I believe only one person is actually attending the meeting. That's Councillor Chris Pond. Um, I feel that... On a point of order, Chairman, uh, I was told uh, only one person could attend the informal meeting, but I do see that the invitation has been extended to numerous officers. I may be taking that up tomorrow. Thank you very much, Councillor Pond. I uh, look forward to, we need to sort this out going forward anyway. Um, obviously, with this in mind, I just remind people that the document was actually approved by Natural England after a great deal of scrutiny, and we look forward to the meeting. Officers are preparing a response. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Bedford. Obviously, very disappointing for all those people waiting for their planning permissions to be released. Not a good Christmas for them. Okay, moving forward. Um, MN, sorry, yeah. I, I wanted to add to my report, if that was okay. Um, just to say that obviously there has been some delay on um, due to the tier four regulations, in re not delay, but um, restrictions in relation to the free school meals program. Um, so just to note, there has been some changes to what I described in full council. And instead of activities, it will be more a collection of food facilities for, for vulnerable people um, across across Essex and across our district. Um, but just to report um, from Essex County Council that over 31,000 free meal vouchers have been provided to vulnerable families. Um, but that will be it will be changed in the way it's distributed across our district. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Okay. That's any other reports of portfolio holders? No. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm not taking questions now. That's just reports of portfolio holders. No, I just want to be. There's an inaccuracy. I haven't been invited to the meeting that was referred to. I, I'm not. Council yeah. Planner, that's down to wow. arrangements of officers. I'm just. Okay, that's, that's fine. I just didn't want a lie to be. Okay. Shared. Well, it's not a lie and it's just a fact. Okay, let's move forward. Um, Public questions and requests to address the cabinet? None, Chairman. Okay, thank you. There's no report of overview and scrutiny because there hasn't been a meeting of overview and scrutiny since our last meeting. No. So item eight is draft budget proposals. Councillor Phillips. <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I will make the assumption that uh, people have looked through the majority of this. I'm not going to spend any significant time on the report within the main body of the agenda um, with the two recommendations to consider the draft budget proposals and to uh, ask the Stronger Council Select Committee to look at the uh, budget proposals as we produce them. Um, we brought out a supplementary version of the 
that got budget proposals which are on the putative yellow and on the website. This uh, point needs to be set in the initial context that this is possibly the most taxing year for a budget that we have had for a long time. And that is true, I think, whether you're at um, parish and town council level, district council level, county council level, or even government level. As somebody famous in uh, the States once said, it's the unknown unknowns that are likely to trap us here. We're doing our very best to come up with a coherent budget. We're still obviously targeting our standard February uh, budget meeting to have this in front of council. But I do fully expect things to change uh, within the time between now and the Stronger Council Select Committee and between that and bringing it back to Cabinet and even between Cabinet and bringing it to Council in February. Just to put it in context, when this report was written, nobody actually predicted that we would be going into Tier 4 on the Saturday. Um, clearly that has a, an impact, and the length of time that we stay in Tier 4 may have other significant impacts on the budget as we go forward. However, I will try and highlight a few things out of the supplementary that uh, we want to call out and show where we're going. Um, we have tried to stay as true as possible to the medium-term financial strategy that I presented back in uh, November, and we have reviewed those um, assumptions, and some of the subsequent developments have been uh, incorporated. It is worth saying here and now that from our initial view of the settlement that we have looked at, we believe our position on new homes bonus is not as rosy as it is currently in this um, paper, and that will have an impact on our overall budget uh, planning. I want to go through Appendix A and not draw out any particular lines in the table, although I'm willing to go back to those if we need to. I think there's a number of things that should be highlighted. Um, our employee cost. That has gone up, even though we've assumed a reduction from the 3% on the pay award down to 1.5%. But we have put in, for the first time in uh, Epping Forest's budget, our pension fund deficit reduction payment. Um, that has usually been handled through a year of end, end accounting uh, adjustment, but we're actually putting it in the budget so we can see the actual impact of what's happening there. That has a significant impact, uh, a net cost to the general fund of just under uh, half a million pounds once the HRA contribution is highlighted in there. We think that we can further reduce the, co the uh, cost of our premises. Um, we are looking at uh, the surprise and services. One of the things we haven't put in the budget before, and we now have from a transparency point of view, is the insurance premises. Um, again, this is an impact to the general fund of just under half a million pounds. There are things that balance out in terms of the uh, transfer payments in and out, um, and they uh, balance out. Uh, we have done some detailed work on fees and charges. Uh, probably highlights they were not predicting any increase in the car parking charges. Uh, however, there are some changes with the North Wheel rental income of just under 700,000. We were hoping when we produced this report that the production of the vaccine and therefore uh, the possibility of being able to have more of our leisure centres open would mean a better re return from our leisure contract than we were predicting before. Whether that is still true following uh, Tier 4, we will have to wait and see. Um, we have only assumed half a million pounds out of a, project, a full fee of just under 1.5 million. Uh, Councillor Bedford's already mentioned uh, the lifting of the restrictions by Natural England, and we do therefore expect, hopefully, an increase in those planning fees above what we predicted in the medium-term financial strategy. 
Thank you. Um, as far as council tax is concerned, we have now determined the base for 21-22, and we did in the MTFS re assume a reduction, um, but this is slightly greater than expected. Uh, and we've also reduced what we expect from our collection rate. We've taken that down from a 98% to 97%. And at this stage in the budget, we are still assuming the five pound council increase, council tax increase for a band D property as we had in the medium term financial plan. Skipping over another couple of ones, I've already mentioned the new homes bonus. We think that this may be an impact of around uh, 600,000 more than this is, but we need to do a bit more work on that. We haven't had time to uh, make that firm. We've also upped the amount of support we expect to get from the government on COVID up to 1.2 million. We think that is a sensible uh, level to put in the budget at this stage. And we're having a contribution from the reserves to all intents and purposes of one million pounds from our reserves. That allows us to balance the budget. We will take this to the Stronger Council Select Committee on the 19th of January, when we'll look at the, for their consideration and comment. I will then bring a revised budget back to Cabinet for our February meeting, and then we will bring it to uh, full Council in our February meeting as usual. Jim, I'm sorry I've had to say so much, but this is a key part of what we're aiming to do uh, next year. It is an important thing for uh, the council to allow us to retain uh, provision of services. It's looking at a sensible balance between uh, an increase in council tax and making use of our reserves, but it comes with a health warning that some of the unknowns we know, but quite a lot of them we don't yet, and we will continue to work that. Jim, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Councillor Phillip. Can, can I just say thank you in, in particular because a lot of the figures were only received last Thursday. So uh, it, it's good to re receive this update now. Uh, members of the Cabinet, who would like to ask some questions? Okay, I'll go straight to Councillor Brooks in that case. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Phillip. Just a couple of questions, um, really. I just wondered, because I know the government has made a lot of money available to the leisure industry, is whether we would, because I know it's cost us an awful lot to open the centres for the past five months, or most of the past five months, will be, do you think we'll be able to recoup some of this money that it's cost us? <clears throat> Thank you, Kelsa Brooks. We are already... Um, requesting money and support and receiving it from the government around the leisure area. There, there are a number of there are a number of caveats around what we actually get back from the government in terms of the leisure provision. Um, the key part as far as this budget is concerned is that we are expecting the leisure centres to start to contribute back to the council, not at the full level, but at uh, a significantly reduced level. We're thinking over the whole course of uh, 21, 22, that we would actually be about a third of the normal uh, input. So some of that is uh, will be covered by government funding. Just one, one, is it possible to ask one more qu question? Yep, no problem, Councillor Brooks. Um, I noticed that in the report it mentioned about the loss on, on the HRA account. Uh, in this current year, I think, isn't it? I think it's this year we're talking about. I just wondered if you could expand a bit on that. Uh, so this this particular paper is clearly all around what we're doing for next year. Um, we hope, or we, we know that by the time we get towards February in the full council, we'll have a much better view on the outturn of uh, 2021, including the housing revenue account. At this stage, we've only got our management accounts up to the end of the second quarter. And I think you would agree, Rose, that uh, March through uh, se September, October this year is hardly typical. Uh, I would prefer to wait until we see what's happening there before I, I make a firm commitment around what's happening in the HRA. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wixley. 
Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, my, my question is in a way related to the uh, sports centres and, and when they can reopen. But I, I wonder if we've got any figures uh, which would give an indication as to when the whole of the residents in the district will have received the vaccinations. Because we're starting with the elderly and then we're going through different bands, broadly speaking. So I, I just wondered uh, if we've got some idea over the next few months how that's going to work out. And then I'm assuming that most of the people using sports centres are at the, the younger age spectrum, and not, not necessarily, but in the main. And if that would give us some indication as when those sports centres can be reopened, and we might be able to also get down to a lower tier. Thank you, Councillor Wicks. I think um, Councillor Philip will need a crystal ball for that, but um, I, I know that they're doing as much as they can to get the vaccinations rolled out as quickly as possible. A lot of it depends on when vaccinations become come on stream. But um, indeed, Chairman, and I, I think there's a there's a couple of parts in that. Um, Councillor Wicks is is right that <clears throat> they are starting with the the higher areas. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to say that my my own father and mother-in-law, father-in-law and mother-in-law, are actually having their vaccinations um, on Christmas Eve. Um, and since he's uh, since he's 90, I think that's certainly right. They're very much looking forward to it. Yes, younger people do use sports centres, but I also think there is quite a significant number of our older residents who actually make significant use of our sports centres. Um, Council Whitbread is quite right. It does depend on the supply of vaccines. Part of that is going to depend on when the Oxford vaccine is actually approved for use. Um, we have obviously significantly more access to the Oxford vaccine because it's produced from, by Oxford. Um, and we'll be able to have that transferred around the country without needing to keep it at minus 70 degrees. So that will be uh, very positive. I would certainly hope that we would be in a position where uh, our first tranche of uh, 18 and over will be complete by the middle end of January, and then we would see a ramp up going forward. I know there's plenty of plans going forward to, to make that happen. Obviously, you know that you need two, two injections to make it fully effective. Even if it, we, that was completed or the first lot were completed by the end of March, that would still then have a period of time before the immunity fully kicks in. Therefore, I think that assuming that we will only get a third of the revenue from the leisure centres over the whole of 21-22 is a prudent decision to make, balancing um, people's willingness to come back to sports centres, leisure centres, with the ability to for them to so to do. But as again, as I, as I said earlier, if you'd asked me this two weeks ago, would I expect it to be in Tier 4 in the week leading up to Christmas? No, I wouldn't. Thank you. Councillor Heap. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, with uh, rates historically low as they are at the moment, um, I just wondered if the refinancing event that's going to happen with the first tranche of repayment, uh, Councillor Philip has considered maybe extending that to help his present situation. I uh, can thank, thank you, Councillor Heath. That refinancing is the HRA and the cost for it are within the HRA. That doesn't actually help us on the general fund uh, at all. Uh, it is something that the, the housing team is actually looking at. We will be taking advice as to when the right time to do uh, that Do that is. Uh, it's certainly, I believe, at the moment, not the idea that we pay it all off. Um, but from a, a general fund point of view, uh, the HRE financing doesn't help us an awful lot. OK, thank you very much. OK, moving onwards, we've got two recommendations attached to this report. Can I agree those recommendations? Great. Thank you very much. OK, item nine, telecare provision. Councillor Holly McRae. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and this is following on from a report I made earlier in the year in relation to our provision of telecare service. Unfortunately, due to delays with COVID-19, Essex County Council have not been able to procure an Essex-wide telecare provision as expected. So there's a delay until 2021. So this is the recommendation that we continue the service of telecare across our district to private um, private residents 
until June 2021. I think, unfortunately, this is just a, a necessary step that we have to take. And I hope res um, hope um, the Cabinet have had an opportunity to read the report in full. Happy to take any questions. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you. Members, Councillor Murray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted another reassurance. I did ask the question at another meeting, but as this item's here again tonight, I think it's important that we just have another very clear reassurance that our service still has the resilience to uh, to properly deliver the service uh, in, up to that time frame. Thank um, you. Holly thank you, um, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Murray. And I believe that's the case. We would not have made this commitment to our um, residents if, if we could not fulfil it. Thank you, Chairman. Any other members? No. OK. Therefore, can I agree to recommendations in relation to this provision? Agreed. Super. OK. Now, members, you're going to have to um, bear with me because I'm going to make a couple of changes now to the run of the meeting. The next re set, set of reports all relate to Wolfham Abbey and town centres, but they actually read better if I take them in reverse. So I'm going to start with item 13, which is a report in my name, that should actually be in Councillor Holly Whitbread's name, which is Wolfham Abbey a Community and Cultural Hub on pages 87 to 120. So if we can take that one first, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, you took me by surprise there, so I'm just having to rearrange my agenda. I'm really happy to be bringing this fo report forward this evening in relation to a cultural and community hub in Waltham Abbey. As we know, we already have a fantastic um, museum in Waltham Abbey, which covers the history of Epping Forest District and also does actual national exhibitions, um, which we can be really proud of with the Natural History Museum Wildlife Exhibition coming up in January and also a fantastic Holocaust exhibition coming up also in the new year. So this really exciting report is looking at a partnership with Essex County Council for a community and cultural hub. As part of this, we'll have um, the provision of library services, as well as um, signposting and other facilities available. We're hoping to reach a service level agreement with Essex County Council, and this is currently in um, discussions and the um, report this evening is asking for permission to pursue these discussions and continue this. I think this will be a really important um, step for the regeneration of Waltham Abbey, increasing footfall on the Waltham Abbey High Street and ensuring that more people visit our wonderful museum, which we have in the centre of Waltham Abbey. Um, just to reiterate, this will also be a community hub. This seems to be a bit of a, a buzzword of late, um, but this will provide the... Um, local services for residents to go to, working with partners, including um, Voluntary Action, Epping Forest and EFCA. So I think it's a really exciting project and I'm happy to take any questions. Councillor Sam Payne. Mr Collins, and a quick question, if I may. Um, my comment is, it's so important. Oh. To, it, it, it's so it's important. important. Hello? Hello. <laughs> You can hear me, yes, I'm, I'm getting some funny feedback, I beg your pardon. It's so important that we do this because what we're doing is we're actually mirroring the, uh, uh, the community hub that we're going to be setting up in the Civic Centre in Epping. It provides the facilities for that uh, central hub to offer satellite services. Uh, we need that location. Um, I'm glad that the talks with the library are progressing well. It'd be interesting to know if we've got any kind of timeline against that because I'm sure it ties in with the... Uh, um, parallel conversations going on with Essex about the library provision in Epping. I was just wondering if you had any indication on timeline. Thank you. Um, sorry, Chairman. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> um, thank you, Chairman. And I think Councillor Kane's exactly right. I think what's really important when we're looking at community hubs is that this idea of satellite hubs and actually provision of better services for residents all across the district. In relation to negotiations, I'm going to pass on to Jennifer Gould if she's on the call to comment on that. Yeah, um, thank you, Councillor Whitbread. Um, no firm timescales at, at present, but what I would say is that we have been having uh, tentative conversations with Essex County Council now for quite some while um, and following um, a decision at, at Cabinet tonight that we can go on and progress those conversations, we will do um, fairly robustly and take them to the next level. So we, we 
are poised and ready really to take those conversations further um, and really committed to doing that. So we're just waiting on decision tonight. Thank you. Councillor John Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I welcome this scheme, but it won't come as any surprise that my questions are around the financial side of it. Um, I see that we're, we're looking at a potential cost of about 1.5 million. And I was wondering, one, where we're going to fund that from? Two, has it already been put in the capital uh, budget for next year? Uh, and if not, can we? Um, I didn't see a, a recommendation that we should, as part of as part of this um, report, we probably should have that um, as a a bid for capital in this report. Uh, that said, I do see that uh, projecting uh, a, a regular income coming from 22-23, which is an encouraging thing, and at that it's a, a return of around about 13%, which is obviously a very good return for what we're looking at, and we can add to that some savings. So provided we're relatively confident with the numbers, it seems like a sensible investment to make, but I just want to make sure that the costs of capital and the cost of financing that capital are factored into next year's budget. Okay, thank you. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. And and Councillor Philip will see that um it's in line with the 2020-2021 budget. And I suppose with this it's a bit of a, a case of investing for, for future the future as well, because obviously this is going to help support Waltham Abbey and help support council services. Um, I will pass to either Nick Dore or Andrew Small if they've got any further comments on the finances. Uh, yes, uh, if, if it helps, um, uh, we have put the 1.5 million in the outline general capital uh, programme. Obviously, the conversations that have been mentioned earlier around bottoming out Essex's uh, contribution are still ongoing. But we have put a marker down in the capital programme. OK, um, that, that taken into account and the points that Councillor Philip has made, should it therefore be one of the recommendations that there is a bid for 1.5 million? Or is it actually written into the capital strategy as we currently speak? Uh, if I may? Yeah, of course, Andrew. Yeah, so we're currently developing the capital programme at the moment, uh, and that will come forward uh, to align with the rest of the budget development process. So if, if Cabinet wish to see this scheme in there, then we'll add it in as a marker and it will go forward to capital, um, to Council as part of the overall capital programme development and approval process. I would just flag there's also a provisional marker in the revenue budget as well for the capital costs associated with this, just so we've got both sides of the equation um, covered off at this point in time. OK, so when Adrian's doing the minutes, does he need to put that in as a bid? I'll assume he does. I, I think I think it would be probably... Uh, Tactful sort to do so that it's it's clear that we've made that decision, Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Right, moving onwards, we've got Councillor Patel. Thank you, Leader. I also welcome this report. I think it's um, just coming forward at the right time. Um, again, we are leading by example by um, by wanting to create a community hub. I think Waltham Abbey is is the right place for us to start. Um, start a model uh, within the district. But I am keen that, you know, what model we create here is the model that we um, say regurgitate around the rest of the rest of the district. Because obviously I don't want to see, uh, see a situation where, where we do, you know, we put one here and, and then we have to think about what we're going to do in another area. We sort of do it once, get it right, so that we can take that model and utilise it around the rest of the district. Um, the comments that have been made around the libraries, again, when libraries, uh, when when the issues around some library services, uh, the provision of library services being cut across Essex, again this was this was something that was being cried at, um, that we were crying out for at that time, and I'm glad that we are now taking uh, taking a lead on that and, and uh, essentially um, potentially being the forefront for the whole of Essex to to, to come and note what the, the work that we're doing. So uh, keep up the good work, um, Mr. Gold and her team. Thank you. OK. Um, Councillor Nigel Bedford. Thank you, Leader. Uh, I'll just echo the thoughts of uh, fellow cabinet members, really. really. Is it, is it is it up up again? Again? Someone's got their mic on. 
That's better. Okay, so uh, yeah, just echo the thoughts of other cabinet members, VAEF and um, EFCA, really good idea. But I'd also like to put out there, obviously with the police station being closed, perhaps uh, it might be good to look at a possible police stroke fire desk in there for giving advice on fire safety, home fire safety, arranging home fire safety visits and local policing, even if it's only one day every couple of weeks, it'd really be a good asset to actually try and incorporate into Waltham Abbey Library. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holly Whitbread, would you like to come back on that? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Just picking up on the points that Councillor Patel made, I think that idea of a satellite hub across the, satellite hubs across the district is vital and making sure we have that um, presence for residents everywhere is, is really important. Um, and I think this joint up thinking is really key. Um, in terms of the way we are delivering our services moving forward. I agree with Councillor Bedford in relation to police provision. I would say that actually Waltham Abbey are quite lucky to have a really strong town centre team. So they've got two police officers who are kind of constantly based in the town centre in Waltham Abbey. Um, but potentially if they could have somewhere to, to pop into and almost a, a desk facility, that might be something that we should look into. So I um, take them points on board and I think we can feed that back. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Plummer. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is great. I think uh, I really welcome this. Obviously, you know, it's in my town, it's in my ward, um, so I'm very happy indeed. Um, so, yeah, um, all I would say is sort of coming back to something I was mentioned a minute ago. Uh, I'm not sure what the current state of play is with the police station, but um, it might, might not be able to answer that here. But are there still, is there still an intention to try and buy it so we can use it for this sort of thing as a Sort of community asset. That's the first one. Um, secondly, I'd hope that Councillor Helen Kaye and I, as the town and district councillors represent the ward, can be a bit more involved because I've not had any involvement in this so far whatsoever. Um, but yeah, particularly with the current circumstances, uh, particularly with youth activities, mental health, um, anything that can help uh, people find themselves and get into the arts. And as uh, Councillor Heap said at full council the other day. Um, the arts and creative industries have a massive economic benefit as well as a social benefit and a health benefit. So if we can do something specifically around that, particularly in the community and cultural hub, that would be great. Um, but yeah, generally, I'm extremely pleased to see this. Well done. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Councillor Holly Whitbread, did you want to comment? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm actually unsure on the status of negotiations with, with the police. I understand last time we were looking at it actually that that it wasn't available but i'm not sure if officers are able to to comment on that further and i would say in relation to the cultural hub obviously the work of the museum is really central to that idea of a cultural hub and i i know we do a lot of kind of partnership work in in waltham abbey on that but um i know councillor um sorry councillor plumber's comments and i'll take them on board thank you thank you very much mr door uh, to answer the specific question about the police station, yes, we have and continue to register an interest in the police station, uh, but we have been told that um, it is uh, subject to offer elsewhere uh, and or um, can only be purchased at, a, at an above market price. But we continue to register our interest. Uh, who, who knows what tomorrow might bring? And we will do that alongside, obviously, further development of the uh, project. Thank you. That's very helpful. Councillor Murray. Thank you, Chairman. Just a number of points. Uh, I hope I'm not doing a disservice to Councillor Whitbread or causing her any difficulties by saying that I completely agree with everything uh, she said. So uh, an excellent report. Uh, I think the cultural hub in Wolf Mabby is, uh, is an exciting uh, concept. Uh, and I think we've got the uh, museum on, online tonight. Uh, I've always regarded that as a jewel in the crown for Epping Forest District. Uh, I can be critical about many things that we've done or not done uh, over the years, but the museum service is always one, something that we can always be very positive about. But I, I expect you would expect me to do this, Leader. I do just want to remind people that, uh, that Loughton also exists. I know we don't have any representation within the majority group, and I have to say, I just think we suffer for that. I wouldn't hold your breath about being consulted, Councillor Plummer, about anything to do with Walton Abbey, because uh, we had a whole retail park 
uh, bill with no real involvement of uh, Loughton councillors. Uh, mm -hmm. We were uh, able to make comments in meetings, but that was it. Uh, and they were largely ignored. So I wouldn't hold your breath about an involvement. Uh, but I do just want to remind uh, the majority group, because they make the decisions on this council, that Loughton does exist. It's by far the biggest town. Uh, we have a struggling parade in the Broadway, a really struggling parade. Uh, we have two of the wards of the mm. highest social deprivation in the whole of the district. Uh, if you take about the top five or six wards, uh, Loughton has two of those wards, and I sometimes think we, uh, uh, we forget that. So I do think the concept of the community hub needs to be extended to Loughton as soon as possible. And the other comment I've got to make is what's happening as regards the library in Epping, what's happening as regards the library in Wolf Mavic, again, just pales into, you know, what, what we're having done to us in Loughton. Uh, I know it's not directly EFDC's fault, uh, but we do have a, a significant input with county. Uh, moving it and keeping it and having it run by the college in Debden, no way. And the plans that they've got for Loughton Library, well, I won't discuss them tonight, but they're nothing short of a disgrace. Uh, and I'm sure Loughton Town Council are going to fight those every step of the way. So I think what I'm saying in short, Chairman, an excellent report. Uh, and bearing in mind what's happening in Epping already, the plans for Wolf Abbey, a later report here for Ongar tonight. I do just want to put the flag up again for <coughs> Loughton, the largest town, but also. Uh, significant areas of real social deprivation and I sometimes think that uh, Loughton gets ignored. Thank you Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Murray, be before uh, Councillor Whitbread comes back I would remind you of, of a massive investment we've made in Loughton Swimming Pool, um, the investment in Deb Broadway, um, the investments that we've made in Loughton over the years, um, various projects and all done by a Conservative administration with no representation in Loughton. So, we never forget any part of the district. We work for the whole district, as I said, at the last full council. Um, Waltham Abbey is an area uh, with its own issues around social deprivation and need. It's an area that's missed out in many years, especially when the Lib Dems and Labour and the Loughton residents were running um, the council. They forgot about Waltham Abbey and they forgot about Epping. And we're making sure that those areas now get some investment into them. And it's important, Waltham Abbey is an important town to the district as important as Epping, as important as Loughton, as important as Debden or anywhere else, and we're making sure investment gets across the district. In fact, I would say this Conservative administration has done more for investment than anyone else across the district and trying to make sure that it's fairly dispersed. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Murray, for those questions and, and those points. And I would say as a portfolio holder, I, I work for the whole of Epping Forest District, and that's something that I'm proud of. And I know we do a lot of good work in, in Loughton. For example, the Council House Building Programme, which was completed earlier this year in Debden. So um, we and obviously our um, cash services, which is currently closed, but is, is normally running on Debden Broadway. And um, also in relation to social deprivation, we do a number of community projects. And I know I'm passionate about ensuring that the whole of the district has the strongest possible representation. And, and indeed, satellite hubs will be important across the district, including in Loughton. So um, we are here to represent the whole of Epping Forest, not just individual places. Um, and thank you for those positive comments about the museum. And I think that is something that we can all agree on. And I would particularly like to thank Tony, Carly and Fran for their really hard work this year. I think it's been a really stop and start year for them, obviously having a big reopening in the summer and then having to close their doors again. And they've been really good at adapting to the, the COVID-19 way of living. So um, I look forward to seeing the new exhibitions opening early in the new year. And I know I'll be visiting with the chairman in January, hopefully. So thank you, chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you. It was, um, yes, Councillor Murray had some very good points. And yes, 40% of the population of the district do live in Buckerstill, Chigwell and Loughton. But I think uh, we are a district and I think it's good at this point to concentrate on Waltham Abbey and get it right and then prove that this principle works and then roll it out. I think it's a good report. Good. 
thank you. Very sensible. Would you like to comment, uh, Councillor Whitburn, at all? Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Heat, for those comments as well. And I would just point out, obviously, Wolfham Abbey, particularly Patton Austin Ward, is a particular area of social deprivation and an area where we do need to rejuvenate our, our high street and our local economy. So um, I welcome them points and I think it should quite rightly be an area of focus, particularly as we look towards COVID recovery. Thank you, Councillor Pond. Thank you, Leader. Uh, can I first of all uh, declare an interest uh, because uh, Councillor Holly Whitbread referred to the Holocaust Project uh, the Lutton District Historical Society, which I chair, is a co-adjutor in that, uh, and uh, I'm chairman of that, to say, and also as an Essex County Councillor, in respect of some other comments I may make. Um, first of all, yes, I, I welcome the report. I think the idea for a community hub is a good one. I think the space which is out of discussion for the library is much too small for a town the size and importance of Waltham Abbey. Uh, there's this fashionable idea among uh, Essex County Library staff that you can get away with reducing the space in a library uh, to the bare minimum. And I'm afraid you can't. I agree the books are perhaps not, don't take up as much space as they used to, uh, but equally there are requirements for audio visual equipment, computers, and so on. Uh, and I'm very pleased to have been consulted by um, the museum staff on the uh, the uh, planning of the new community hub, which I think is an excellent idea. I think the inclusion of the police station is a very good one. And uh, although Nick Dorr has said that uh, it's presently under, uh, it's pr presently promised to a third party, uh, if that disengages as I expect it will. I think we need to be very agile and to be able to buy it because it is a really important building in the Waltham Abbey streetscape, which I may come to on a, light, a later item. Uh, as to the comments made by the leader, I think the lie can be given to that by this document, which is the Waltham Forest, uh, sorry, Waltham Abbey Heritage and Regeneration Scheme which was conducted between 2001 and 2005, when there was no overall control in uh, Epping Forest, and which attracted a large amount of money coming into the centre of Waltham Abbey and uh, initiated some regeneration projects, which are still showing their importance. So I, I'm supportive of the idea of a cultural hub. The library needs more space, and good luck indeed for the series of exhibitions next year. I think uh, Councillor Pond will find by 05 we had a proper Conservative administration close nearly in, in Epping Forest, and that's when things changed for Wolfham Abbey. When the uh, Liberal Democrats and LRA and Labour run the council, they certainly didn't pay, pay much attention to Wolfham Abbey then. So uh, it's not so much a lie as. Um, a... Sorry, Chairman, can I just clarify that? There were eight Labour councillors in Wolfham Abbey at the time, so they would not have been ignored. The only ward that was not Labour in Wolfham Abbey was High Beach. So there was no way that Wolfham Abbey was ignored. You've said that twice tonight, and there were eight Labour councillors in Wolfham Abbey. That is a fact, not fiction. Oh, I, I remember too well that there was Labour councillors. They obviously didn't work very hard for Wolfham Abbey. Right, OK, moving onwards. Thank you, Chairman. If I just quickly can jump in, I think um, Councillor Pond and myself both share a love for history, uh, had that been what I studied at university. Actually, the history of, um, of Wolf Mabby's political administration is actually when I was still in junior school. So um, I, I would thank the strong Conservative representation that we've had since then. But what I would say um, in relation to um, the library provision is actually, I know um, Councillor Pond's points and it's important that we have a, a good and comprehensive library provision within within the town, but also be mindful of, of modern approaches to library provision and making sure it's, it's what people want to use. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. No. Sorry, Chairman, if I could. Pastor Philip. Thank you, yes. Um, I, I heard what Councillor Pond was saying about the police station in Waltham Abbey, and I agree it is an important site. 
but coming back to what was said by Mr. Dole, the key part is that if we are going to be investing our taxpayers' money in something, we have to be getting it at an appropriate price. It's not enough to be agile and pay way over the odds. That was the other uh, thrust of what uh, Mr. Dahl was saying. It was either unavailable or when it was available, it was significantly overpriced. I don't mind doing something that is good for our residents and spending their money sensibly. I do object to paying over the odds for something. Absolutely. Good point, Councillor Philip. We need to get a good return on whatever we invest in for our residents. That's a, a, a key factor. That's how we manage to get things done successfully. Now, members, we've got um, this report before us. The recommendations actually are on item 10, and they will need to be adapted for the bid for 1.5 million, Mr. Henry, to make it read correctly. And I think that will probably have to be worked into recommendation five on page 30. Okay. This is going to be a difficult one to write up in the minutes. Yeah. But members note the report otherwise? Noted. 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 Fine. Okay, we then move on to item 12, um, which is again about Waltham Abbey Town Centre. Uh, and this time it covers the report that's been done by Studio Free Business Consultants who were appointed back in September. Uh, to undertake a series of independent uh, economic reviews. Um, there's a further report after this one that um, takes that a bit further and uh, gives us a timetable for the future. Um, Mr. Daw, would you like to add anything to this one? Um, I know members will have taken time to read the report and its content um, already. Uh, le leader, on only to add that this is the first of a series of reports for each of the major conurbations. Um, if you remember, Waltham Abbey and Ongo were identified by yourselves as the uh, immediate uh, priorities. Uh, the other reports will follow in January, February and March. These are effectively uh, a follow up on the uh, keeping the high street safe kind of activities of the next phase. Um, and they're very action orientated on purpose. Uh, you will see from the detailed report that there are precise uh, targets to achieve. Um, we've obviously other established uh, bodies and uh, people and using obviously the resources of our council and obviously of partners as well. And, and similar reports are envisaged for the um, other, other town centres. Um, again, uh, an element of consultation and conversation has happened, although it is very difficult to do as much um, as we would like under current circumstances. And obviously, as the uh, if the projects are accepted and are rolled out, uh, most of the actions will take place with the engagement and knowledge of others. Thank you very much. Councillor Patel, this comes partly from your uh, COVID recovery piece. Thank you, Leader. Um, again, I welcome this report coming to Cabinet and, and, and I ask that um, Cabinet approve, uh, approve the recommendations that have been uh, uh, requested. Um, I have a few questions though on, on, on the actual report and, and, and the associated reports as well that have been, been brought forward this evening. Um, with regards to the uh, the monies that have been uh, allocated towards the, uh, the Town Centre Project Manager, um, it's shown our commitment that we're going to stick by this role for, for three years to try and uh, rejuvenate uh, not just the Wolfram Abbey uh, on the town centre areas, but also the rest of the district, which I think is key. Um, but I think what's important is that obviously um, the action plans that we're setting, um, making sure that we've got robust timelines and, and, and that one of our scrutiny committees is also looking at uh, the work that's being undertaken uh, and monitoring the progress and so, so that we can, um, we, we can, we can um, monitor, monitor uh, what progress is taking place. Just in, in one of the action plans, we've, we've listed them as one, two, and three, and I think perhaps it'd be useful if, if we could see um, what that will look like in reality, as in um, a, ch a chart basically indicating by which dates that the, the, these aspects are, likely, are, are, are required to be completed. Um, in terms of the, the work though, that's going to be undertaken, um, it'd also be useful to understand what money uh, will be um, 
made available for this town, uh, town centre project manager to, to complete on, on these works. Uh, because I don't think that's quite clear in the report. Um, in terms of the consultants that we've um, that we've engaged or commissioned to, to carry out this piece of work, uh, Studio 3 business consultants, um, the question I have is um, how were they appointed? Um, what, what process did we follow when, when we appointed them to undertake this piece of work? I'm sure no doubt that, that, that and, and looking at the report that's come forward this evening, that the work that they've undertaken and the report that they've produced is is, is well detailed and robust and, and thus form the basis of uh, what we're looking to achieve, not just in Waltham Abbey, but right across the district, but it'd be, um, it'd be good to understand how, how, how that appointment was made. Um, in terms of engagement with state stakeholders, um, we, we, as listed in the report, that we're going to be in, uh, engaging with the town, town, centre, uh, town and parish councils, but, um, but also as well, I think that the, the Chamber of Commerce has, uh, has some really good input, which they can support with as well. And I think it's important that not just them, but other stakeholders are properly uh, engaged with, because essentially we want, we want um, a vibrant town centre areas uh, for, for, for not just our businesses, but also for our residents as well. Um, on, on, I think page 65 uh, um, is, is part of this item. Um, the gender item, sorry. It's, we look at the number of vacant units of, and we're doing a comparison between 19, uh, 2019 and 2020. Um, just wanted to understand when, when we, when, we um, uh, when this table is put together, how, how do we get to that figure? Because, is, is, because units could be vacant for one month, two months, or, or six months, seven months. So how, how do we determine that figure when we, when we do our analysis? I think that's, that's the bulk of my questions, Leader. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm sure Mr. Dawe will come back with an answer. Um, obviously, there's a number of issues arising from this report this evening, and I'm, I'm sure it's already gone to your um, your panel as well, uh, Councillor Patel. But you may wish to take it to a select panel at some point if someone wants to have a more in-depth look in, into the reports. Mr. Dawe, would you like to comment? If I can remember all of the questions, so sorry if I do not. Um, um, in terms of actually providing um, specific targets around times, resources, uh, what, what will be contributed, yes, that, that is the intent. Uh, the full detailed report that is being produced for Waltham um, Abbey um, is designed so that the next stage is to put that timeline resource requirement and everything else to it. Now, in terms of resources, the vast majority of actions are around uh, prioritizing and organizing the work and the money that already exists to, to maximize the effect from that. Uh, any, any slight additional amounts would be identified as part of the next stage, but in the main, it is using current resources to carry out the action. So for instance, um, uh, targeting our own staff to a particular town centre for a short period to address the 30 plus recommendations, for example, um, to work with uh, our colleagues in uh, the county council for some of the roadworks and so on. And also obviously to mobilise other interested parties like the uh, town councils, uh, the trade bodies and other voluntary groups. Uh, but that that detail is very much at the next stage, which should happen during January. Um, in terms of how um, the company was chosen, I, I will have to go back and, and provide a written answer to that. I cannot remember uh, exactly, other than obviously at the time uh, the commission was uh, made, it was at a time when we wanted to be as responsive as possible to the threats of COVID-19 and the recovery from it but I cannot remember the exact uh, circumstance. Um, forgive me, I think I've forgotten one question, so forgive me on that. It's about the vacant units. Uh, oh, the vacant we... units. Um, they're, they're, they're effectively repeat spot surveys. So I, I would agree uh, that the information about the duration of um, uh, them being vacant, whether they're leased on... Um, uh, special terms or not. We don't go into that level of detail because obviously that's a level of uh, intrusion at this moment in time, which is problematic. It just gives a sense of um, uh, 
the kind of um, um, position on the high streets rather than an absolute measure. We also look at other things like business rate yield, uh, information that is coming from the Department of Work and Pensions, uh, unemployment rate, etc. So that information is triangulated with other information. And indeed, I, uh, members will have received in the past a kind of economic update report, which is a, a, a more, more general information set. But yes, it, it is based on spot surveys. Leila, can I come back in? Yes, you can very quickly. Thank you very much. I think when uh, when the original report was brought to cabinet a few um, a few, uh, few few months back, um, a number of the uh, aspirations seemed well. A, a number of the proposals seemed as, as it, as it seemed aspiration aspirational at that time. And it's good to see now that we're actually putting some meat behind the bones and, and, and bringing something forward, showing that you know we are identifying easy, easy quick wins uh, essentially, so we can make a difference locally quickly. But, but I will reiterate, though, that I think it's really important that we have that these measurable targets are identified from the outset, and we don't want lack of resources as a, as a reason why we weren't able to achieve them. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor John Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I mean, this is clearly part of my portfolio as well. From an economic development point of view, I was going to confirm that what Mr Dodd was saying is that these occupancy are a point in time, so is carried out by the economic development. Uh, department on, on, a, on a regular basis. Um, it's not a detailed analysis, but it is a point in time view that allows you to compare like with a like for a year ago. Um, Councillor Patel has already mentioned uh, anecdotally that, that I think we are aiming to call the post here the town centre project manager, making it very clear that he's not managing the town centre. What he's managing is a set of projects that help us to improve the town centre, which I think is a real difference from where we were before, where the town centre manager was not as task focused as that. I, I do have a little issue with the report not actually calling out the recommendations easily for uh, consumption. I think the overall idea is fine. Uh, if we decide to go ahead, and I believe we should decide to go ahead, we should bring back another report uh, to Cabinet with the project plan and the projects fully costed that we're actually going to achieve. I think that's probably what Councillor Patel was shooting at as well. Um, I, so the idea is good. The approach is good. I think it makes sense to somebody to manage it to make sure that those targets are hit. But we do need to bring that back and, and, and evaluate both the time scales and the budget for it. Yeah, thank you. Good points. Councillor Nigel Bradford. Thank you, Leila. I'm struggling a little bit with the chart, which is on page unnumbered. It's at the bottom there. Um, just, I, I can't get my head around where it says continuous vacancies. If we just took the top one, for example, uh, of the seven units recorded as vacant in 2020, two were recorded as vacant in 2019 survey. Yet number of vacant units in 2019 shows, I can't, I can't, and it's the same for every one. When you read down the figure that says, vacant in the 2019 survey is different to the figure that says number of vacant units in 2019. Chairman, perhaps, I, perhaps I can explain that for Tessa yeah. Bedford. I'm missing it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what it is, is you have the, the number of units vacant in 2019 and the number that were vacant in 2020, but the key part is of those ones that were vacant in 2020, how many of them were also vacant in 2019? Okay. So if, if, if shops A, B, and C were vacant in 19, and C, D, and E in 2020, then there would be one. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Sam Kane. Sorry, you caught me scribbling notes. Um, yeah, just following up with, um, uh, with Councillor Pellet's comments there about the need to get these costed and properly scheduled. 100% uh, backing on that. Yes, they do need to be costed and scheduled so that the uh, uh, the, the, the the town manager, project manager, um, has um, something to get his teeth into when he actually starts. He, she actually starts. Um, but I wouldn't want that delay uh, of getting it scheduled, etc., to take away from many of the quick wins that have already been identified that can be dealt with simply by our own highways rangers, by existing personnel and existing monies. So I do want to uh, 
crack on with the quick wins while we schedule the larger projects. Absolutely. All good points. Well made. Uh, Councillor Dave Plummer. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is good. This is the first I've really known of this. Uh, which as a town and district councillor representing the ward it's in, I think is a bit, you know, it would have been nice to have been <laughs> spoken to, particularly as I am particularly active in the town centre. I do speak to local businesses. Um, during the last couple of years, I was organising meetings with local businesses, along with Helen Kane, um, mostly at Vintner and Mason. Um, and yeah, we had a lot of ideas that we've come up with. Uh, some things were addressed, uh, but some of those ideas are actually in here. Um, for example, the Love War from Every Residence card, that's a great idea. Um, and I know the European supermarket in the Market Square has got their own discount card, but they weren't in a position to work with other businesses at the time. But I think that'd be brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, some other ideas that have popped up are using vacant units for pop-up exhibition spaces for local charity shops, um, for art exhibitions from schools and local art groups and stuff like that. Uh, I was speaking to somebody from Duncan Phillips about that a year or two ago, but obviously since then everything's gone wonky. Um, uh, yeah, the market, the stuff that's said in here, it really does need some investment in it and it really does need to be a bit more lively, but we've been gradually working on that, you know, there are things that need doing, but you know, a couple of years ago, I, uh, before I was elected, I um, asked to just the town council if we could get reusable water bottles. We did that, we've got them in. Uh, and there's, you know, there's loads of stuff, and it would have been nice to have been consulted about it, but um, up for being, for being involved now. So, yeah, again, it's another great thing, and I appreciate some of it's easier than the rest, and everything's up in the air now because of COVID. But generally, yeah, good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Plummer. Um, I think a lot of this has come through the um, COVID Recovery Portfolio Holder Advisory Group, so there would be representation from all parties on there. So I'm, I'm not sure who's there from the Greens, but um, we've made sure that's a cross-party group. Uh, Councillor Heap. Uh, yes, I'm on the uh, that, that uh, committee. Um, yeah, I think um, setting objectives is very, very good indeed. But if you're going to employ somebody as a, a project manager, I would just uh, ask that they be, if you choose carefully, you get a dynamic person and they'd be given quite a lot of free reign. <clears throat> yeah, very important to get the right person for that role. We've seen it before. If you don't get the right person, you don't take things forward. Uh, that's going to be key. Um, okay, there's no actual recommendations attached to this particular part of the report, so we'll go then on to item 11, um, which sets out the, the next steps forward. And uh, uh, Chairman, can I just clarify something? Yeah, please, Chairman. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to point out, I wasn't talking about party representation, I was just talking about speaking to the councillors who are actually in the town centre and in the town. Yeah, so, no, point taken, point taken. Um, Moving on to agenda item 11, which is the other part of this report. I think actually, probably, if I'm being honest, that this could have all been put into one report. It would have been a long report, but uh, would have probably made more sense in some ways. But this sets out what we're actually doing. And obviously, the fact that there's going to be a report on ONGA coming forward, that we're looking at other areas as well. Um, I know it's all gone through the COVID recovery group, and is obviously touched upon partly by Councillor Flip. So, um, I'm, it's landed in under my name, but uh, I don't know whether other councillors might want to comment, Councillor Patel. Ch Chairman, so my comments are pretty much as as per the last item. Um, I think, as I said, it's completely the right thing that we're doing, um, bringing forward these reports and. Um, yep, no problems. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Phillip. Yeah, Chairman, and uh, I'm, I'm happy in the future to, to bring this forward for you because uh, my economic development team is doing the, the majority of the work on this one. Um, I, I think uh, just in the light discussions we've had already, Councillor Patel's right, a lot of what's in here has already been touched on in some of the more detailed reports. But a key part, I think, is to pull, um, highlight uh, paragraph five where we've already worked uh, with Town and Parish Council in Epping, Loughton and Buckersfield, uh, I would, wouldn't want uh, Councillor Murray to think that we were ignoring him again because that's not the case. Um, it's just a case of, I want to make sure with the economic development that we do things 
in a way that we actually make them successful. And that does mean because of the resource that we have, that we have to do in the somewhat sequential approach rather than doing everything at one time. I suspect if we try to do everything at one time, we might not do it nearly as well. Uh, this is all really about making sure that as we go forward from uh, where we are with, with COVID and in conjunction with Council Patel's COVID PAG, that we make the best for all the areas across our district and we'll knock them off uh, one at a time. Wellington is in there. We have done some work. Waltham Abbey no longer the first two. We obviously have a degree of work as well to do around the Northfield Airfield with the master planning going on. This is just pulling it all together to say there's a lot of work that we need to do. We, we've started doing it. We will get to it as we get to it. OK, that's fine. Councillor Stephen Neville. Thank you, uh, Leader. That's very good. Um, <laughs> Councillor Philip has said we'll get to it when we get to it. But can you expand more on that? Because obviously every area of Epping Forest would like to see uh, some economic renewal at this time. Uh, I'm obviously, I see Buckers Till has been mentioned in that report. Uh, do we have a sort of time frame in terms of years and how this is done, or is it going to be quicker? That's the bit. Very hard question to answer at the moment in these difficult times. I think almost impossible. Yes, Chairman, I, th I, think, I think it falls into a similar sort of bucket as the... Um, as the budget does, that there are things that we'd know and there's things that we don't know. Um, clearly, from, from what we've been through tonight, Waltham Abbey is the one we're targeting first. Um, we also d made some more progress on the Onger approach. Uh, Loughton and Buckers Hill are clearly areas that we need to look at afterwards. I doubt that it'll be years and years out, uh, but I don't have a schedule for that yet, as, as, already, as was pointed out by myself on the last report, we don't yet have a project plan for the Waltham Abbey one. Once we've got that in place, we will then be able to spend some time in looking at the other ones. It's worth noting that the economic development team at the moment is, is significantly late in terms of resource, not least because, uh, as was called out at full council, Julie Chandler has moved on. She was contributing to that team as well. So uh, as we go forward, we will try and do things. Um, I think it would be unfair to say that we're not doing anything for the other um, areas, even at the same time, because one of the other core recovery projects that uh, we've talked about and are underway are in terms of the procurement. I think it's Council Navy brought it forward that we're going to be uh, favouring our district in terms of procurement. And one of the things we are working at from the economic development point of view is drawing up that gazetteer across the district of our businesses that we can actually put business in that direction. And that is not pulled down to individual town centres, but individual town centres, we will do as quickly as we can, but I want to do a good job. Thank you. Councillor Sandy. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, in terms of the uh, the rest of the district, of course, it's important we get there as, as, as quickly as we can. It's worth noting on page 44, um, I think it's both items, yes, seven and eight are detailing work that has already kept, been carried out, even though it's preliminary work in Loughton and Buckers Hill, just sort of setting the scene, as it were. Um, overall, I imagine we could envisage these projects lasting probably the lifetime of the project manager that we're about to discuss, which is aiming at a three-year um, term. That's the uh, Chairman, yes, I think that's a reasonable assumption to make. Um, COVID allowing. I think, I think I'm allowed to put that caveat in there. Um, it may be if we have the necessary finance and necessary capability, and that may involve the second town centre project manager, we're able to do some multitasking, do more than one at the same time. I think the key part is making sure that we've got good things to do that generate value for money and generate real benefit for the individual town centres. I don't want to get caught in the habit of doing things just because it, it's something to do for that particular area. I want to do the right things. Okay, that's good. That's the hotel. You want to come back? Uh, thank you, Leader. Sorry. Um, just 
just touching on the council level's uh, question um, and 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 uh, bringing paragraph five to the fore. Uh, there's some members may not be aware of the Safer Spaces program, and um, I've uh, I, I join these meetings every Monday morning where the different directors report back on the uh, designated patch that they've uh, that, that they were allocated um, way back in April May time. Um, when when uh, COVID, the COVID pandemic um, took took its toll, um, so although although we're looking at regeneration moving forward, I think we mustn't forget the work that's already gone in over the last six months, seven months or so, um, in, in getting us and enabling us to a position where we are now, um, with the changing changing landscape and got a different gov uh, and changing government guidance, so the, the different directors have had to stay on top of their brief particularly the environmental health team, um, or through their coordination and licensing team, um, in supporting businesses to to continue and to and to operate. And I think that that work mustn't mustn't be missed, um, uh, Chairman the Leader. No, no, absolutely. Um, good good point made. Obviously, at the moment we're in that process of hoping our high streets survive COVID. Now we then now need to look how we move forward from COVID. So, uh, you know, tough times ahead for high streets and this is an important tool that we've got up our sleeves now members if i could just say that i, I think council patel's got a very good point there but this is really the part where we start we're starting to move as his covid pag has from a reactive approach of doing everything we can as quickly as we can to actually planning the things that are going to give us more value and i think i think that's it's been, given tier four is maybe not the right time to be doing it but i I'm happy to see that we're actually looking forward and planning rather than just reacting. Exactly. We have to look to post post tier four and the better days that lie ahead of us. Um, if we can note that particular report, members, are you happy to note that report as it stands? Okay. Noted. Okay, thank you. We then move on to item 10, which really is the recommendation sheet for that particular report. Councillor Phillips, have you got anything you want to add to this particular item 10 report other than i can imagine the sums of money that are mentioned in here you'd want as bids rather than being affirmed at this stage uh yes Joan, i think i think that's the key part um to make sure that we that they're bids because it, this is all for spending in 21 22 yeah. we're not doing a budget yet we, we, we should have it in there. I think, in general, all these things are in there. Um, I'm fully, fully supportive of this, uh, but we just need to make sure that we, uh, we we do it properly through the budget. Okay. Members, we've, we've done all the reports. Any comments? Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to share the fact I find myself in uh, unusual territory of agreeing with everything that Councillor Phillips has said in the last five minutes. Excellent. Thank you to him. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you, Councillor Heap. Councillor Kane. And just a quick comment to make sure that those recommendations include the uh, bid for one and a half million, one and a half million for the um, community centre. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Payne. I, I know that's been added already. Um, members, you've got those recommendations before you can I agree them. Agreed. Agreed. Wonderful. Agreed. Sorry for that skipping around. There's no any other business, no reason to exclude the public and press. Therefore, it just leaves me to wish you all a happy Christmas or as happy as it can be under the circumstances. And let's hope for a much better 2021. Yeah, yeah. Happy Christmas. Here, here. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye, everybody.